This is Bioprototype. Uh, it is a vampire survivor style game that was recommended to me by my friend uh, Matthew from work. Uh, he also was the one who recommended, I believe, a long time ago, uh, the game Transistor to me, which is actually, uh, I think that I don't know, these two games have a lot in common in that it's about, you know, taking a character and kind of programming them uh, in order to have the set of abilities that you want uh, in order to, you know, su survive the combat challenges that are ahead of you. So like Vampire Survivors, you don't manually shoot in this game. Instead, you know, your all of your attacks are either regularly targeted or auto-targeted. Um, and really the you know, what you do is you navigate around bullet hell style to avoid enemies and you design your character. You figure out how your character should fit together. So I kind of like it. Um, I'm going to start a new game from scratch because I, I was mid-run uh, the last time I quit, but I kind of want to start from the beginning. So it looks like there's lots of different sort of base creatures that you can be, but I'm at the very beginning of the game and I've only got Stomy, a regular little prototype with nothing special. So let's be Stomy. Let's start in... Let's see here. Let's go with stage zero. Ten waves of enemies. Fairly easy, because that's about what I can handle. So you can see, my character basically, periodically, fires a projectile at the nearest enemy. And that projectile actually passes through enemies. So, you know, it, it's kind of interesting how... this is kind. It kind of reminds me a little bit of, you know, I've been playing Shippo. And in Shippo, one of the navigational tools you have is oh, these little squares that if you collide with them you get absorbed into them and then popped out in the opposite direction from the direction that you arrived so the way that you um uh use them or i think you maybe you have to push the interact button but either way the way you use them is you don't interact with them until you're on the opposite side from where you want to go so your positioning determines your destination and that's how aiming in this game works too you try to position yourself so that you are sort of shooting that projectile through multiple enemies. So it's a pretty clever way to give you control over your shooting without making you actually aim your shots. Okay, so uh, I've I retrieved unpicked organs and I got 30 cells. Okay, so now I unlock uh, rewards, which include different things that I can attach to my character. So this is the tentacle of the coral. It fires projectiles repeatedly when activated. And this is the nerve of the clown, which activates an organ based on another organ activating. And this one activates an organ periodically. Okay. Um, so I'm going to choose this tentacle. And then I'm going to choose this nerve. Okay. what I, The choices I just made don't make a lot of sense yet, but they will. So this is where you design your character. So what I've got right now is I've got a spine. And the spine, basically what the spine does is it determines how often and under what conditions one of my attacks happens. And then it's linked upstream or downstream. It's linked downstream to an attack. And uh, and so, so things that have diamond-shaped backgrounds are attacks. And things that have circular backgrounds are like nervous system. And then each of these things, like so it says that this nervous system, for instance, this bit of nerve, this spine, can connect to a tentacle, a limb, a gland, a horn, or an offspring. And this is a tentacle, so it can connect here. This tentacle can connect to a nerve, a spine, a retina, or a cochlea. So I've got a nerve. I've got this clown nerve. So I can attach the clown nerve here downstream from the tentacle. And then this clown nerve says it can connect to all of this stuff. And I think this is a, what is this? This is a tentacle, and this can connect to tentacles. So I'm going to put a tentacle here. And so now what I've got is... This spine, every one second, with an efficiency of 120%, it's going to fire off whatever this is. This is a tentacle attack. This is the tentacle that was firing projectiles. This is where my projectiles were coming from. And then whenever this fires, it triggers this nerve. This nerve activates the right side organ, while the left side organ, when the left side organ hits an uninjured enemy. So every time my projectile hits an enemy that, uh, that has not been injured before, that enemy at that position will, will fire off this effect, which fires projectiles repeatedly when activated and does six damage, whereas this does nine damage. So let's see how that actually plays out in the world. Also, before we do that, let's look at culture. So I've got 45. You can't see that I've got 45. I've got 45 of these cells, and I can spend them on this stuff, but I can't afford any of it yet. So we'll, we'll do that later. Let's go into battle. Okay, so now 
I'm still shooting like before. But each time I shoot an enemy, they have more projectiles come off of them. So you can see why this game was recommended to me by a programmer. Be at least if that's my theory. Is because I was basically able to sort of logically chain together these vampire survivor style attacks. And, and I could have done it the opposite way. I could have... Well, let's see if I could have. So, actually, well, first, let's see. Okay, so I'm going to claim two more rewards so I can grab a new spine if I want to, which is slightly faster and better than the old one, but ah, that doesn't seem worth it. The retina fires something off when something gets killed, and then this one only fires off on critical strikes. I don't even know what those are. So I think I'm going to... I don't like these. I'm going to refresh. I'm going to spend 10 of my currency and refresh them. So now we've got Tentacle of the Beetle that fires Whirly projectiles. That's pretty cool. Um, and it's a tentacle. I like that one. Let's grab this one. And then we can get a new spine that fires less often but much more effectively. Let's do that. Okay, so let's get into my mutations again. So let's swap out my spine. So now I've got a spine that's got slower activation, but more efficiency. And that means that instead of doing 9 damage, this thing does 16 damage. So before, the old one, its efficiency was 120%, which means... Because if you look at this, if I pull this over here, its native damage is 8. So if I stick it on a spine that has 120% efficiency, its damage jumps up to 9. But if I give it a spine that has 206 efficiency the damage jumps up, jumps up to 16. So now this thing is going to fire less often, but do more damage. And I think the net effect overall is going to be positive. And then this thing, I can't put a spine after a tentacle. You'll notice, oh, it does say spine, but wait a minute. Okay, I can put a spine after a tentacle. Never mind. So yeah, I can put a spine after a tentacle. Um, and I'm not sure what happens, though. If I put, like, this is a regular firing thing. I'm not sure what happens if I just chain two regular, like multiple regular firing things together. Like, let's put whirly projectiles on that. Okay, let's do this. But I'm genuinely not sure if my whirly projectiles are going to be firing at all. Because I don't know if this spine is going to be contingent on this happening. Or what? Like, like, like basically, will this fire one second after this fires? Or will this just be firing on a continuous cycle just like the other one? I'm really not sure. So let's... let's Actually, let's go to the test chamber and just try it out. Okay, so... I am periodically firing... Okay, okay. I'm periodically firing that... Oh! So it's when my... When it's when my projectile ends, it becomes a whirly projectile. Okay, so if I... If I put a periodic... If I put a periodic thing after another periodic thing, it transforms into that thing. Either maybe that's on the death of the projectile, or maybe it's just after a, after a second. Maybe that's what it is. Weird. Okay. But it doesn't look like anything is happening to the things that are hit by the whirly projectile. Figuring out how this game works is a big part of the process here. So this, oh, it's every time this one hits an uninjured enemy that this one will fire off. And so it could be that it's not getting a lot of uninjured enemies because it's a test chamber. Okay, so let's 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 try battle. Let's find out what happens. Maybe things will go better in the battle. Or maybe I need to rethink how this thing is working. So I need... Okay, yes. So when, okay, when my boomerang hits an uninjured enemy, it does fire off... The cluster projectiles. So yeah, so basically what I've got is this like weird chain of projectiles where first a little yellow ball leaves my character and then it becomes a boomerang and then the boomerang spawns a bunch of extra projectiles wherever it hits. And now I've only got six seconds, five, four, so I've got to try to collect as many of these resources as I can before my time runs out. I think that the ones I don't collect do go somewhere, but I'm not sure where. Okay, so I picked up this loot. So I've got this new retina. 
And so now... Okay, I can grab Limb of the Skeleton. And... Tentacle of the Swordfish. Fires proje uh, repeated projectiles. Pro Ooh, multiple projectiles in a circle. That seems cool. Spine of the Mammoth. Way less frequent, way more damaging. Huh. If I could attach this to more stuff, that could be really powerful. Okay. Let's let's start over from scratch here. So, I've got the Mammoth. So, I'm going to be firing this one off way less frequently than before. But I want to fire off as many, as many different um, projectiles as I can from it. So, this one that does 10 damage and it fires multiple projectiles, uh, five projectiles. Now it does 46 damage from five projectiles because it's coming off this mammoth thing. So it doesn't fire very often, but when it does, boy howdy. Um, and then when it hits, let's, let's do the maximum number of projectiles again. So this one is a big pile of projectiles that it should do maybe on hit. Let's see here. Yeah, so when it hits an uninjured enemy, then we fire out the cluster, and then when the cluster contributes to a... Oh, actually, let's let's have it be based on kills. And then when it hits... Because, because this is going to do so much damage, it'll kill most of the enemies that it hits. And so I think that's going to be more likely than anything else. I don't know. Oh, we're making random decisions here. And then let's do the boomerangs from there. And then the boomerangs, I guess, can turn into... Can I have them do a little swipe at the end? I don't know. I'm at 8 of 8 brain capacity now. This is the maximum I can put in a chain right now. So let's... Let's see how that works. But let's go into culture, because now I've got 155 cells here. So let's... We could buy an entirely new brain. We could also buy some hit points. Let's do that. Let's buy an entirely new brain and some hit points. But we're not going to use the brain yet. We'll, we'll, we'll pick up the brain later. Okay. So, it looks like, yeah, so when the, when the projectile finally, finally dies... It does this sweep attack. So I'm carrying the sword looking thing, which would be doing a sweep attack like that on my person if it were the first thing in the chain. But because it's at the end of the chain and it fires off based on the end of the life of another projectile, it's just doing it out in the world instead. And you're seeing these little sweep attacks hitting these enemies. And then you've got this mini boss-ish looking character. So yeah, we are just annihilating folks. This this game does a great job of sort of ramping it up and making you feel just so powerful. Okay, so now I've picked up this loot. Cool. And then I can... Uh, fires projectiles when... Okay, this is a new kind of projectile, I guess. Limb of the Giant. A rectangular strike when activated. Sure. Okay. Mutation. So, we now have two brains. So let's... Let's continue... Actually, let, let's let's make this... Let's make this just a another projectile. Let's just have this thing do multiple... Just jackknives around. But now we've got a second brain. And so we can start all over again. So here we've got that original spine of the chimpanzee that I had. Let's have the first hit be this. This guy does 43 damage at close range. And then when the one to the left hits an enemy, let's have it also do a rectangular strike. I don't know what a rectangular strike is, but this is an endpoint. This one doesn't follow on with anything else. So we could have it launch a projectile from the target instead. Or a self-surrounding projectile. I don't even know what that is. But then I don't have another piece of nervous system to go after it. So I, I'm actually really curious what this rectangular thing is. So we're going to find that. So basically, periodically I'm going to swing my sword. 
And because I, when my sword hits somebody, then it's going to do this attack, whatever that attack is. So let's go into battle and try this out. So Rosenberg is singing Dry Bones. Whoa, what the? Okay, so whenever I do one of those close range attacks, it does a bunch of extra attacks in random directions. It's not, it doesn't seem to be hitting a lot of enemies, so it might not be that useful. Partly just because the, att the initial attack is so powerful. It doesn't really, we don't really need those other attacks usually afterwards. Ooh, whoops. I think that was my first hit this session. Eight, seven... Okay, here we go. Come on, let's get everybody. My main job is actually to try to pick up as many cells as I possibly can. So, La Coalition, because I, before we started this session, I left the room for a little bit to cool down because it was getting hot in here. Coalition apparently ran a poll to, to see if people thought I was wearing no pants. And apparently the verdict was they agreed that I was wearing no pants. So well, I'm not, I'm not going to disabuse you of that notion. Launch a Nova when activated? That seems cool. It's a, it's an end point, but... Oh, Spine of the Jackal, two vessels. We want that. Spine of the Mammoth, two vessels. We want that. Okay, so now let's... Okay, so we've got a new Spine of the Mammoth that actually is 520. Okay, so this is... Whoa! Oh, oh no, that's Jackal. Sorry, I, I was freaking out for a second. Okay, 2.86... Okay, so this is a little slower and a little more powerful. So put that in there. And now, because it has two vessels, it actually opens a side path here. So we don't need all of this. So now, okay, I'm doing that starburst that ends in this little burst here. And that's just for uninjured enemies. So I have one just for hitting an enemy. That's for just hitting an enemy. Then it will launch a Nova where it lands. So I think... Oh, wait, what's the efficiency? Oh, 35%. This is 155. Okay, this is... That's probably better. Yeah, so we'll do, we'll do that. So now this does 15 damage. Um, but then on this side, we can fire off this guy and wherever it hits we do a little I don't know we fire off one of these I guess that is very little damage I just I don't love this nerve this nerve isn't great what about this one okay when it contributes to a kill then we fire off a self-surrounding projectile. That sounds good. Oh, wait. Insufficient brain capacity. There's too many things. Okay, so I actually can't go any further than that with this. Okay, so I'm just periodically firing off this, but that's pretty good, actually. What about this one? Is this better? This one looks even better. So let's do this one. And then let's go over here. So that wasn't extremely useful. The efficiency of this was not high. Um, so let's swap this in for another split. And let's just have two of these going at once. So, we, like, yeah, I'll, be, I'll have two of these going at once. And then each of them, when they hit, they fire off boomerangs. There we go. Nothing else needed. Let's go to battle. So now I'm firing this off really frequently. And I might this might actually be two sweeps at the same time because I branched it off into two identical attacks. I think these sweep attacks you're seeing are me actually doing two sweep attacks on top of each other. And then each time I do it, it launches a bunch of bananas in every direction. And then on top of that, I've got that crazy five-way attack 
that when it hits, it has a bunch of area effects on contact, so that anything that wasn't killed by the initial hit is definitely killed by the area effects. Now this round looks like it's a significantly lengthier than the previous ones I've been doing. And the crowds of enemies are crowdier as well. I do appreciate that most of the attacks are either aimed universally in a really predictable direction or they're aimed like at the nearest enemy because like my positioning like I'm determining who the nearest enemy is by how I position my character so that allows me to aim the attack without manually aiming the attack all right so efficiency 190 is pretty good um for a retina and then are we just getting all spines and things here oh oh a le oh here is it's a nova attack with two vessels attached to it okay let's go to culture i've got so many cells now so we could grab another brain or we could up our brain capacity Let's up our capacity for each brain. Oh, let's raise our pickup range. Let's just raise that like crazy. Um, and then hit points. Yeah, we're good. Okay, then let's do mutation. So now my brain capacity is up, which means I can add two more things to each of these. So I kind of liked the idea of branching off here. And so that anything that is killed by this Nova. And I, I'll need to raise brain capacity more to take this further. But then, let's see here. Yeah, so, so what'll happen... Okay, so let's actually put this Nova sooner. So let's say a projectile from this hits something. If it contributes... It, it does a lot of damage. If it contributes to a kill, then it that kill triggers a Nova... And anything that that Nova, if that Nova hits an uninjured enemy, that enemy launches this. And if it contributes to a kill, then it causes, a, what, another Nova? Let's do another Nova. And then on this side, I've got more brain capacity. So maybe when these guys hit something something happens oh this is a self-surrounding projectile when activated hmm. let's say what i need is okay when it contributes to a kill then we just launch another one just no just more boomerangs that's all i'm doing over here is more boomerangs that's it hey there mardog thanks for joining us uh get into battle okay so each time I slap these guys they're launching bananas in every direction and then my radial attack when it kills someone it sets off a huge chain reaction but if if my star if my like starburst attack hits one of the tougher enemies and doesn't kill them in one shot it doesn't fire off the explosion so it's, it's really up in the air like it, I, like I want my starburst to hit weak enemies because then it sets off the chain reaction but if it's strong enemies then it does so actually so I'm, I'm better against a strong enemy if I hit a weak enemy first that is interesting yeah so and this stuff it's like the game developers aren't like meticulously planning out all these effects that are happening they just made a system with rules, and then I get to turn those rules into whatever the, the crap I want, and it's occasionally hilarious. <laughs> so I gotta say, I really like this as an advancement on Vampire Survivors. Because, you know, Vampire Survivors, you were just sort of, like, accumulating weapons that would sort of happen on top of each other, right? But here, you're actually connecting them logically to each other, making certain things happen. So a spinning projectile. Um, and spine of the mammoth. I 
Is this better or worse than the last one I had? I'm not sure. I'm going to grab it anyway. Um, so let's look at my current Spine of the Mammoth. It's 2.86 and 528. So this is slower and even more powerful. I'm fine with that. Um, so I've got a bunch of cells. Let's see if I can... Can I get another brain? Yes, I can. Okay, so we've got an additional brain. So how are we going to build this one? Let's do another Spine of the Mammoth for periodic firings of things. And let's... So this fires a spinning projectile. And a, because of the, the mammoth, it does massive damage. This one does a self-surrounding projectile. I'm not sure what that means, but let's do it. Um, and then... Okay, I don't have a lot of... Hmm. Okay, so let's do a quicker spine. So basically, each of these projectiles will then transform into another projectile afterwards. One of them... will do this, and one of them will will do this. I think... I think this works. Okay, let's get into battle. So I should be firing more projectiles now, but still at a pretty low rate. Okay, yeah, it's a... A lot of my projectiles are... What the heck? I'm honestly not even sure what's happening anymore. I... Just stuff. I'm doing so many things at once that I can't even follow it, but that's fine. Like, because I consciously decided to make it chaotic. Like, I consciously decided my goal is to make is to make projectiles propagate as much as they possibly can. And uh, that is what is happening. They are propagating like crazy. I think next time I get the opportunity to choose new organs... I think I'm probably going to try to get more, actually, that fire. I, I don't love these, like, um, the big giant clubs that are appearing. They just look weird. They don't seem to ever hit anything very important. So I think I'm going to try to get more just projectiles flying everywhere. The thing I'm not seeing, I don't know what the self-surrounding projectile is. I'm not, oh, oh, I see it now. Yes, okay, That's it's a little bone thingy that's, like, floating around my body. That's what that is. All right. Oh, oh, we've got so many, so many cells. Gotta get all the cells before we run out of time. I'm just killing so many enemies that are just off screen. <laughs> okay, yeah, Coalition, thank you, and, and Cogs, thank you for reminding me of the time. I think we're okay. Well, now I should probably go in just a second. The, the, the thing that I've got next is fairly flexible, but... Okay, this homing projectiles Nova when activated a spinning projectile okay so let's go to brain 3 let's take these guys off and let's go with spinning projectiles and Novas actually actually let's do these so we got two of these coming off all the time and then they just keep branch. Yeah, I think I'm gonna need to have more more conditional nervous system. But I think I think this kind of works. I don't think it's I don't know how many waves there. Are. I think it said ten waves. So I kind of want to get through ten waves. Let's. I don't, I'm not gonna spend a bunch more time messing with what my character can do because I feel like I'm pretty effective now. So let's. Let's get through the next couple of waves as quick as we can. And then I'll get out of here. Oh, look at it. It's so satisfying to just have these attacks annihilating all these enemies the way that they are. Oh, whoops. Oh, gosh. And so I've just got to wait for these starbursts. Like, the starbursts, when they happen, they cause these chain reactions, but but only when they hit the weaker enemies. Like, i got to make sure there's weak enemies near me to be hit by the starbursts. Because these clusters of powerful enemies, the Starbursts aren't doing as much to them. Alright. 20 
two seconds. Oh gosh! <laughs> yeah, the, the bullet hell nature of this genre is a little tough for me. Bullet hell is not one of the things that I'm the best at. And the fact that you kind of have to constantly be just dodging things is... I'm not great at it a lot of the time. So, hopefully I'm doing fine. Oh, whoops. Okay. So we got... Okay, some, some nerves. Good. Yeah, I want to get some conditional... Nerve of the Raptor. Oh, high efficiency. That's nice. And Swordfish. Okay, let's quickly culture up here. Let's... I can, okay, I can add a third brain. Let's add an extra brain. Or fourth brain. It's a fourth brain. Let's grab our hit points. Oh, whoops. And then... Okay, we got a new brain. But, okay, yeah, let's... Okay, let's save got a couple of mammoths here slap a mammoth on here let's so this will fire off multiple projectiles or, or projectiles repeatedly and they'll do more damage and when they hit let's see here critical strikes so I don't know what a critical strike is okay so this one when these hit an enemy it'll fire off something else like that maybe And then this and, oh, I don't know, this, I guess, something like that, whatever. I don't know. Let's, let's just do, I think, I think this is our last round. So let's, I just threw a bunch of crap together. Let's see how that, okay. So yeah, so those little clusters, when they hit a bunch of enemies, it's absolute chaos. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. Oh, that is great. Look at this. So I actually did not have extremely high hopes for that, but it is, it is. <laughs> this thing has gone crazy. All right. Awesome. <laughs> Warning. Wait, am I trapped inside this grid? I don't know what happens if I... Oh, there's a boss. Oh, is... Okay. So do I have... Yeah, it looks like I am... Trapped in a ever-shrinking area with this boss. There we go. We got him. Research complete! We are successful. Let's press any button to continue. So time, 31 minutes. Stage, zero. Wave, survive, 10. Prototype level, 17. And let's go back to the main menu. So now, we've unlocked the organ called the Cochlea. And the Genius prototype. And the Squander prototype. And the Horn and Bladders. We've got so many things now. So I'm genuinely not sure what a lot of this stuff is and I don't have time to check it out because I do need to get on to something else but this game is really cool right I'm going to keep playing it on my spare time and if I find more stuff that I feel like is you know stream worthy uh, I'll have to share it with you folks but uh, for right now let's wrap this up so um, yeah if you want to subscribe to my channel you can uh, I will definitely link other vampire survivors like games over here so you can check them out if you want to and uh, one of them might be this one I don't know we'll see <laughs>